Welcome back, everybody, to the NLC. We are here with game two of the day and our match of the day. It is going to be fourth wall taking on Nord Veteran. Two teams that have had Shin varying Bay. fortunes Shin throughout the split, Bay. but Shin have Bay. ended Bay. at Shin a similar Bay. score. Shin and Jen Ray! Jen Ray! Hi. There's one person who's on everyone's minds right now. Veteran, who, who would that be? Uh, Omon. Because uh, we're ha whether Nord win or not, comes down to, to whether Omon... Generate. It's gonna be the man, the myth, the legend, the saviour, the closest thing the NLC has to Jesus Christ himself, Jinrei, who has come down to cleanse all the four full sins and lead them to the promised land. That's more likely Moses, I don't know. Um, some Christian thing, all right? Jinrei, he's been stomping, he's been 1v9ing, he's been immense. No one had their name. I mean, no, one, his name wasn't even on the lineups for a few weeks, right? Yeah. Nobody was thinking about this guy at the start. When he came in, you know, we felt it was an indication that 4 4 were all the way into their decline. But honestly, these have been really good choices they made. I'm excited to see how this mid lane match goes because it's not like Oman has no carry performances. He has. They've just been inconsistent, whereas Jinwei has very consistently paved the way forward for his people. His people. <laughs> His people. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, for me, what stands out about um, the carries from Fourth Wall is how smart, I guess, is, is the word I'm going to use for that, specifically with just, like, their... They don't throw. You know, I think both Jim Ray and Ragnar, they're, they're very good at, at keeping themselves safe. They don't take any unnecessary risks, and they don't have any unnecessary deaths too too frequently, at least. So um, that's, uh, that's quite important. It's a good thing. Can we get, like, Halo music in the background just while there are veterans yeah. in there? <laughs> Meditation there. But, but you... <laughs> you're oh, talking that. about the, the carries on. <laughs> on fourth wall, uh, not really not really throwing and not going too aggressive. I, I feel like that over-aggression has kind of characterized a little bit of what we've seen co coming out from Nord. Nord is... Yeah, especially... Oh, yeah, Nord is this team. Continue, sorry. I was like, Nord's the last game, you idiot. No, it's not. <laughs> no. It's literally this game. I was like... It's literally this game. <laughs> just ignore me. Like, like, just ignore me. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, there is a severe degree of aggression, though, right? Like, Couch Coast and Top Lane has mostly been relegated to stuff like Scion, but he's played very aggressively on these picks, very hard for yeah. his engages. Hido has had a very, very good split, particularly if he's able to get that Zaya, and that would be good because Zaya might let him counter the engage and counter the aggression that fourth will bring, particularly with Jinrei there. Um, Chimera, though, he's a very aggressive player himself, right? So it's not like 4 4 are just a full one trick team. Jinrei's had a lot of impact, but they do have a lot of pieces there that have come together around Jinrei to be able to make this work. You can't just leave it on him. And the question is whether Omon and Indecision's aggression in this game is going to be the good kind or the bad kind. Because, like, I keep thinking about that Omon Ari game. That was one of the best games from any mid laner we've seen this split. He pulls off a repeat of that sort of thing, could be really, really good. And it looks like one of Lissandra or Nico's gonna be up for Jinrei, though I feel like this is yeah. a guy who could pull off Oriana, who could pull off Seraphine. But that's unknown right now, and I wanna see him tested a bit more. Don't wanna see him potentially come into playoffs as a one trick. And for everybody looking at home, right? Like, looking at this, this is a pretty bad situation for our losers from the last game, right? Both teams are at yeah. four right now. One of them's going to move up to five and start to think about challenging mm -hmm. Ruddy, right? You want to make sure, to be honest, that either the full full project fails or that Nord definitely stay on a downward spiral because if you're a Domino fan, they have to beat one of these two teams. So they're going to be looking very carefully. And you want to talk about Jinwei's engage, that would be an insane combo to follow yeah. up on from anything Jinwei pulls out. Yeah, as we, we have had a few picks revealed to us. I think the Rel fits into the sort of style that Seneca has been playing. I think he was a big Nautilus guy, and the Rel is kind of just Nautilus, but more at this point. And Kaiser, she's doing doing pretty good for herself as well. Nord, though, I think drafting something that we don't really see too much in terms of this Ash Fox drop. Yeah, I'm also thinking that's probably jungle rail, no? If you if you mm. if you slap down the yeah. Rakan, then yeah, you're slap you're you're putting rail into the jungle. So indecision is going to be picking that one up. Which to me, is a little bit surprising. So I think of indecision more as like a not not like a squishy jungle player, but more like a sort of like a carry jungle player. Obviously, like yeah, a it's all like being bridge his... stuff. Yeah, like Wukong as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So not not the dog champions, basically, which rail is indisputably a dog champion. <laughs> So um, yeah, he's he's she's he's on that duty to this this game. 
I would be quite interesting to see as well, though, because we haven't seen a lot of Rail Jungle, obviously, uh, you know, it, it, it was mini reworks, got really good as a jungler, then got nothing above again, and it's, it's all over the place, but still pretty solid as the, kind of like that tank jungler, uh, more like utility focus, just as you would imagine, you know, I'm sure it's pretty easy to, to picture what kind of jungler Rail would be. He's going to get matched by the Nautilus from Khmer on the other side, we're talking about his aggression, Nautilus is a very, very aggressive champion, tanky, so he can go into the dive into with the with the engages but the kaiser to follow that up as well with the yep. sejuani like everyone's just going bam straight on forward and you started you started by um bringing me into this conversation talking about ash how much is she gonna hate her life against that oh yeah, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. <laughs> she's gonna Prob struggle big time probably as much as veteran when he's trying to listen to her voice lines like, it's just it's just God. generally Action, not so happy it's <laughs> not going to be enjoyable at all. But looking at the identities um, from both these teams, it's very, very clear what they want to do. They both want to start fights on each other. They've both got the tools to do that. And as we're coming through the second phase of bans, we're seeing Fourth Wall taking away a few of those engaged top laners and Nord removing that Lissandra key to see that taken off the board. I'm wondering if we're going to see a Nico next yep. or if that one's going to be opened up for Jim Rice. It's also a really good composition to just lock Oriana though, right? It's a really good ball delivery system. A lot has to be said. Nautilus is a good pick to control something. Nico will be up. It's, it is nerfed though. Um, it's going to be a good pick to control something like the Rakan, but it's also a comfort pick for Chimera, right? Last time we saw Chimera just absolutely going for it, it was on that Nautilus. So good synergies, good comfort as well. They feel like they can go into the Nico. The Azir ban made me think maybe they look to do Nico themselves. Looks like it's just gonna be they're gonna play it safe. They're gonna go Cassante here. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Renekton paired with this well to go into that Cassante now. Um and it's gonna be a counter pick for Chimera. We'll see where it is, right? I think they need damage, so it's unlikely to be something like a Seraphine. But I'm just trying to think of players I know that fall into this kind of mold. The player that I'm actually thinking of, which might be surprising people, is actually the uh, mid laner for G2 Hell, Tifu, has a very similar champ pool and very similar skill set to Jinlei, and she would go into the Oriana Seraphine here. That's kind yep. of hand modeling him right now. Chase has been locked in, does increase the chances for an Oriana. You need some damage to Kennen though. I see, I see Foxdrop's eyebrows have been raised by that slam. <laughs> Yeah, I love that double slam down of Ken and Ken and Jace. Like two solo laners of just pure aggression, uh, nothing, nothing tanky there. Just like aggressive, just Ooh. just squishy. Go for it, go for damage. No and for me, it's the Ash Rakan Kennen one two three. Ooh. Like I just think that's yeah. that's beautiful. It is going to be the Nico though. Slap down for Jinray. He doesn't get it. Sandra gets one of his other signature champions. Very very good uh, on on this pick. As you mentioned, has been nerfed, but still. Should be fairly good. I'm not sure how the matchup would be against Jace, though, yeah. because, uh, yeah, hmm. Nico's range is... I mean, she well, she has good range with her abilities, but uh, as far as outside of that... And it's her abilities have gone nerfed, right? Her ability to shove in constantly with that Q, like, it might be a little bit tricky in, uh, in that mid lane. Yeah, I, I am, I'm not that big of a fan of it. I actually really like AD itemization into a Nico. I like champions that can play good ranges into a Nico. And Nico's ability to bully you just off one catch in the early laning phase has been heavily diminished. I think Omon can play yeah. around this lane really well. I think Omon has the, as Foxdrop aptly put it, dog jungler, or I like to call her <laughs> engage Poppy, so I guess it depends how you think of Poppy. Um, <laughs> in, in Into that matchup, I think Jinrei's going to struggle here, and this could end up being maybe Jinrei is a two trick here, right? Maybe you can control him mm. onto these sorts of champions, the Lissandra, the Nico, and just get a better matchup for yourself. Or Jinrei truly comes into zone this game and says, yeah, maybe I have a shallow trample, but believe me, I can bust this out into anything you can go to me. I'll step to that. Composition is yep. good, but we're really looking at that mid jungle. That's always being an issue for Nord, right? They need to make the mid jungle work. They have all the tools to make it work. They have good matchups to make it work in. But maybe Jinrei does actually turn out to be the monster that we're hyping up to me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I, w we'll have to see if the church is going to be in session. Um, obviously, there are other players on fourth wall, even if veteran may imply otherwise. And I think this is going to be a big game for Yute, all right, uh, on this Sejuani, because he really is going to be a main brunt of the engage. Yes, Chimera is going to be able to provide a load of pick here on the Nautilus, but in terms of champions that want to be standing directly in front of you, it's kind of just that Sejuani with Faye on the Cassante, more looking for flanks and that such a thing. So I really want to keep an eye 
on how what he's doing in the early stages, and especially what he's doing in team fights to be as effective as he can. Yeah, I, I think unlike the first game we saw where uh, we described, uh, uh, was it Sha Shackle? I think he was playing when, when he was on the Gragas. He had to like the pick of the litter across the whole board. He could go anywhere he wanted to go. I think for you, it's a, it's a little bit different, like matching up with. I mean, you can CC lay with Nico and do some some good damage there, but you know when you got Asante in the top side as well, like I just nothing is like massively compelling. And if these lanes play out the way that um, the way that Nord want them to play out, you should have, I would imagine, losing top and mid lane. So that can be a little bit tricky to make things happen there, depending on the poke that comes through. Especially like Kennen and Jace can throw down a lot of damage. And for me, just uh, just as a side note for you. This is their, I think, 11th game they're playing here. I think in total it's 11 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I, I did, I made that up, but that's good. And this is his 8th <laughs> unique champion. So he's he's just like, if we're talking about how Jin Rei is, is maybe not having the widest champion pool, it's like Lissandra and Nico. Mm. You is the complete opposite of that. This guy just picks down whatever it is, whatever he thinks might help his team. Uh, and yeah, very, very diverse set of, uh, set of skills for that yeah. champion pick. And, and I guess if we want to zoom out a little bit further and look at these compositions as a whole veteran, I think last game we had this very clear idea of how the mm. game was going to work. If Domino weren't able to accelerate through the early stages, natives could kind of just wait them out and beat them in the team fights later, and that's exactly what happens. Do we feel like there's a time pressure on either of these teams to get stuff going in the early stages? Maybe not to the same degree as Domino, but still need an early lead to get their composition working. It's not to the same degree, but Nord would definitely be in that Domino category for this game, right? Yeah. They want to play out their lane bullies. They would prefer not to get into an even fight because like Foxtrot was saying earlier, this Ash ain't gonna enjoy life if that Nico hasn't been adequately punished, right? That Nico's gonna slam on top, that Nautilus is gonna slam on top, that Kaiser's gonna slam on top. They have all the tools to control you. You don't want to give them the ability to close range on you, but if you put them behind, they're gonna have to take damage to close that range on you. And if they don't have adequate items to be able to make fast plays, they're not gonna be able to do that. So that's the win con. Um, on the side of Nord here, you know, just make sure that you're accelerating and then Fawful will not be able to tank and still be able to do damage into you because it's much more of an even draft setting in those 5 and 5s than it was before. You can also see a massive play from Catch Coast, by the way. Like, yeah. people forget about the cannon yeah. until the cannon presses R and just insta-gives 5 of your people late game. He's still mm. that kind of monstrous champion. You could easily see the game turn from a really good cannon flank um, because even though Fawful have this kind of composition that does well in 5 on 5s, one little bit of a misstep in vision and Kennen could turn the whole thing and twist the game into Lord's favour. Much more even than before. And so if we're looking towards the bottom side uh, of the rest, last game we saw an AD build um, coming out from Den Voxnate on the Kai. So uh... Jim Ray... Walking very far hard here. That's not a clone. That's a pretend Nico. <laughs> That's first blood coming down for Nord. Oh dear. And it's the Ash, the ADC that picks it up as well. One of the best champions you would imagine just to pick that, pick that down. Only blowing the ghost as well. So not a huge amount invested. The flash, I guess, from the rail. But yeah, that's... It's just, that's it's just rough. rough. And, that is rough. Well, I mean, the, the good thing is... Jim Ray does have the ability to revive himself, to come back to life. Obviously, not going to take three days, and he is going to be able to make it back to lane in time to pick up that XP. But like you're saying, giving Hedo the lead on this Ash can be really punishing, especially with how much chase down potential this champion has. Ash is mega spooky with some early lead as well. Like she, she people underestimate her lane bully potential. Like she can be really, really scary. Uh, you know, those volleys are nothing to, to scoff at at all. And also, bearing in mind that Ragnar, ha Ragnar has locked in the cleanse as his summoner choice, which I think is very smart, obviously. It means later on you can cleanse out the charm, the ash arrow, maybe like the cannon stun or something like that. There's a lot of uses for cleanse, and I do think it was pretty much a no-brainer to slap down, but it means you do lack that combat summoner for these early fights just like this. Ooh. No heal, no exhaust, no nothing. It's going to be really hard for you to find your footing in this lane. Yep, and 
Hido can extend on these trades here because oh, Indecision look, has made the decision to play super Omen's... hard to bot side. So Camara is going to be Omen's, Omen's just yeah. died in mid lane. We are going to have a dive in the bottom lane. Level two hit for Camara and Ragnar, and that means no way. it's an overstep from Seneca. Taragro actually going to be juggled off. Indecision oh! taking the shots. Wow. Ragnar still alive. Everyone oh! else on Lord. Blinking health bars. Camara able to no! get that one with the root. Seneca flashing away. But well, that went disastrously for Nord in the bottom lane. Wait, two for two. Yeah, Omen died mid. So while that was all happening, Omen got ganked mid by Ute. Um, and then Ute died because it was like a, they had finished it off with a tower dive. So Omen went one for one in the gank mid. And then that happened in bot as well. That was a, a whole kerfuffle of things. And Ute's going for the return gank here. Omen's pushed up pretty far, but he does smell that something's wrong. Won't be overextending just yet. And, oh Ooh. man, that that dive just—that was ugly. That was that was not pretty at all. It, well, if you know, if, if four forward stayed level one, it was great, yeah. great play. But they did level up, and unfortunately, it's ruined everything for Nord. Just leveled up, gained access to our abilities. I think the thing for Nord though is you look at where those kills have actually happened and where they're actually going. Oban with one, Hedo with one. For fourth wall, you got a kill on a Sedrani, kill on a Nautilus. That's good. But maybe not as optimal. And 4-4 four, four have gotten really good resets on their lane, so right, the next play available on bot lane is going to be for 4-4 four, four, unless it's a repeat of the dive from Nord, and the next play available from the midsection is going to be for Jinrei, because Omon has no teleport, so Jinrei's going to be able to push out the next wave if Omon wants to be able to match this back and try not to allow Jinrei to have caught up here on economy, which he effectively has. Otherwise, the game has moved back to a really good even state for 4-4, four, four, and like we were saying before, that's really good for them, right? That's yeah. really good for them. Yeah, but a, a lane that isn't looking particularly even right now is top. Now, you would expect a Kennen to be able to get a little bit of bully potential uh, onto a Cassante, especially with the difference in terms of range. Should it be going this badly for Faye at the moment? Yes, that's my answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Ken so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's Cannon. It's Cannon who started Cull, and it's a Faye who's had to know that the entire time Ute has to be matching on bot side, or the game is over. Ute was showing everywhere but top. Jinwei. Oh, gonna get caught up from indecision over the wall, comboed with a grand entry from Seneca and the Nico, running away into her own jungle. Gonna get hit by the accelerated shock blast. The CC oh. Hedo with his second kill of the game. Yes, another one for the ADC. That's great news for Nord. Not so much for Fourth Wall. Honestly, veteran, you've hella jinxed Jinrei this game. Two deaths already, five minutes in. Very suboptimal gameplay for him so far. But to be honest, just some good catches. I think that one specifically there was a really, really nice little hex flash over the wall from Indecision to catch him out of position. And all, all Rel being a bit of like a, a tanky, boring, whatever style champion. There's so much CC there, so much setup. And you get caught by that. If there's any kind of collapse from their teammates, then you're in a lot of trouble. And Jinrei's been feeling that so far. And Nord have put a lot of resources into shutting down Jinrei, right? These are really planned catches on Jinrei's tendencies around midsection. The level one was just a straight up all on invade into that mid rush. They knew who they were targeting. That one there, indecision, going flash over the wall there for it. They knew who they were targeting, right? They know the big focal point of a lot of Fourfuls victories and they know they have to shut this down or it's going to be very difficult for Hido to use Hid lead from bot lane to be able to carry the game. So good scouting by them. Let's see if that's enough to shut down Fourful entirely. Yeah, because I think the the next question from me is how do fourth will respond? Jim Ray's is down, but Ragnar hasn't died himself, and Faye has survived this lane. Where does Yute want to be going to try and get his team back into this? You ignore top for sure. That's not where it's at. Um, I mean, no. <laughs> I was thinking maybe <laughs> with like Unsteel Spellberg, like Ignite that you've got, you're seeing him sit on maybe, but no, it's just not. It's just not to be at all. Like you really do still have to figure. Figure it out around mid and bot, uh, which just makes it really, really difficult. And I did say, you know, in the draft, like if the, all things go the way that Nord want them to go, he should have a losing top of mid. He shouldn't have pressure in that. And the way that this yeah. game has been executed has very much been so. But he is level six now. Yeah, he's got level mm. six. Oh, flashes up on both Sonica and Hido. This could work here. Yeah, but no cleanse available. 
Battle Dance gonna go away. Seneca the one gonna be locked down by the Glacial Prison Ignite. And here's back, but Kemera taking so much damage in return. Nice. One for one, but so many cooldowns burnt by fourth wall. And Hiddo Jim can Ray. chase them down with the slows from the frost shot. Jim Ray moving over. I mean that Nord decide against going any more aggressive, but fourth wall, they try and make a play in the bot lane, and it gets turned around. Not a big fan of that death, to be honest, from Seneca. I just think he had all the tools to survive that one and was a little bit greedy. He like flash healed right at the end when he was already dead, basically, and like Ignite taking down him and stuff as well. A little bit tough, but Hido might find himself in trouble here as well if you want to go oh, bounty. Snap engage from ah, Fourth Wall, and it nice. had to be shut down for Yute, but the teleport through from Omen proves a horrible one for Yute as he's going <laughs> to drop for a double for the Jace. You could see a play on top side from this Nautilus now, though, right? And see this Herald area secure. That did put Hido pretty far behind. Let's see if they can make this work. Still has the flash, is going to use it to get away. The slicing maelstrom coming down, stunning the Nautilus and Faye. And whilst it's a lot of tools used to get out from catch cost, he does get out. There's so much has happened right there. We're just going to take a look at it, the overall impact of the game. What sucks, a lot, a lot sucks there for fourth ball. The two biggest ones are Omen got two kills and Sejuani picked up the shutdown from Hido. Hido had a 300 gold bounty on him, so he was essentially worth two kills. You don't want a single kill going over to Sejuani, like that's just pretty much wasted. But the fact that it was that bounty as well, nah, that's that's no good. Omen also in return getting all those kills, it's looking very dire here. That dust blade building into the man mm. immune as well. Where it's just that pesky little blasting wand on the side of Jinwei that is such an uneven uh, itemization here. And here comes another dive for Nord. Yeah, fourth wall not even able to get towards their tower. And Nord fumbled a dive at level one, but this one significantly cleaner. Chimera living on borrowed time as indecision, just waiting for the sun. Flips him over his head. He's going to donate another kill over to Hido. Five and one on the ash. Wow. Infer uh, sorry, Infernal. Herald on top side has been traded for fourth wall, so they're getting something from this, but Nord, they really needed that dive, right? Their composition, it does not scale well into the later stages of the game. <sighs> they need to shut down fourth wall early. They need to keep them shut down and fourth wall. Hmm. They just want to try to make things more even. They're into a 5 1 and 2 Ash now, and that 3 1 and 2 Jace, though, so the game is on oh. hard mode. Wow. Okay, and Cassante is just solo kills the Kennen, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, hey, catch okay. he had to use the flash, he had to use the slicing maelstrom to get out of the gank, and with neither of those available, does mean he's slightly easier for Faye to take down. Meanwhile, Yute has been caught out by indecision in the mid lane. Nord basically deciding not to mess with Zedrani because it would take too long to kill her. That's a good solo kill on the top side, but I'm not sure it really influences the game a huge amount. I don't think Kasane will be able to repeat that. Most likely when Cash Cross has his ult and like uh, especially when Flash comes up as well. It's all about this bot side play here and Nord now read the play and are going for the engage. Magnet Storm into the double knock up Ragnar. The only AD carry in range dead. to actually deal damage and indecision is going to get locked down. Second kill of the game for the Kaiser is going to feel good. But once again, Hido with the slows can just Whoa, fire no! out arrows at will. But no, oh, no, oh, no! no! gets too aggressive. But finally, the oh! for Ragnar will kill her instinct for the shutdown. And now he's in a 1v2 with Sedeka and Hido. Arrow comes out onto Chimera. And Hido uh. just cannot stop getting kills. He'll donate this one over to Sedeka as it's just a case. The Rakan diving forward and taking down the Nautilus. You take that as full 10 out of 10 times though. That bounty from Jace onto Kaisa brings her to a breaking point, right? What you want on this Kaisa and the reason the composition works so well is that at some point she's going to be able to one-shot the Ash. No matter how many kills the Ash gets, she's not going to be able to sustain that damage. And if you can get Kaisa to that break point, it doesn't matter if the Ash is 8 and 1 or if the Ash is 0 and 1. If the Ash is out of position, Kaisa kills her, Nico kills her. So they're going to take that 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, the Ash is 7, 1 and 3, but she's still in a very difficult composition. But my god, we've seen Hido carry Nord before, and he's in a good position to do it now. Yeah, and this is the thing we mentioned before. Ash is going to have a tough time in this game just existing. Precisely as you mentioned, Veteran, it doesn't matter how many kills she's got. She doesn't become any harder to kill. And, and, and fourth wall are not lacking ways to do that, right? They're not lacking ways to bring her into the shadow oh. realm. So, it's it, it could be it could be hairy. It could be difficult oh, here for Hido. 
Zelika popping this Shirelia's flash engage. Not quite able to get the double oh. knocker, but Ragnar Ooh. is just chased down. Almost a solo kill for Hedo as every time Both will try and make an excursion into the bottom lane. They seem to die and Hedo is keeping on getting fed. This Ash is going to the moon. Yep. This is Lord such needed a big that... game as well. Sorry, go on. Obviously, please, by all means. Please <laughs> well, it's in... in... If we zoom in out of this individual game and we look at like the overall impact of this specific one in in the, in the matchups, like for Nord, this is huge, right? They, they they really need to prove that they're not. Uh, but before this season, this split gets just completely put in the bin and it all slips away from them, as it has been recently on that big lose streak that they found themselves in right now, especially with how well their spring went. Playing a team with the equal standings, both of these guys four and six. And especially a team like Fourth Wall who is on the up. This is such a big game for Nord to win. Probably so far mm. the biggest game of the split for these guys. Like I don't think any other game means as much. Uh, not only just in the, in the standings, but kind of from a morale standpoint as well, right? You need to still be able to prove to yourselves, if no oh, one yeah. else, that you're good enough to compete and get a playoff I spot. And especially, yeah, it's the last two weeks of the split. If you're going to pick a time to win games, it's going to be now. And... No, they've got 14 kills in 14 minutes, and they put themselves in a great position to win this game. I've already mentioned that the lead is potentially vulnerable on Hedo, but I think it's key that Nord have made this game not about mid lane. Yes, they were able to shut down Jim Rays in the early, but so much of their attention has been towards countering fourth wall aggression on the bot side that there really isn't a huge carry available for fourth wall at the moment. Oh, oh. the hitbox of the minion. <laughs> Oh, that is juicy. If you if you're not too familiar with the the inner machinations of the madness of Nico, obviously she transforms into different things, and that's not only useful as like a little sneaky deaky play, but your hitbox changes too, right? And minions have a significantly smaller hitbox than champions do, so that Ash out doesn't actually doesn't actually hit her. So that was crazy right there. All eyes on Hido. He is the man of the match for Nord. He has carried them before on the Zaya, yet to do so on the Ash. But this game, he is the man that has to dodge absolutely everything, just become the one in this matrix that Nord have to break out of to claim their fifth win. And if he's able to do that, able to output his damage and not just deliver a bounty over to the Kaiser, then Nord are going to be able to win this game. They have managed to play this early game to their objectives. They're not in the position Domino were in at this point. The game is insanely winnable for Nord. They are in Ooh. the lead. Camara with a hook onto Indecision, and Ragnar still has that enough changed. damage to burst through the rail. Seneca with the ult, the dash over the wall to get away, and we Ooh. have a pause, gentlemen. Dramatic. Okay. Mm. We see indecision falling down there. I wonder what that pause would be about. I'm assuming it's probably from Nord, and maybe something that impacted indecision's death right there. But we'll like we'll have more information, more in the story as it develops. Um, but yeah, you know Nord are in in a really really solid spot. They were up until up until that play, but still fourth wall showing signs of life, which is very important, very good. Not just rolling over uh, and dying. And I'm, you know, we we mentioned Jin Race at the beginning of the game a lot, obviously. And he has a pretty terrible start, you know, he got killed twice, it was really oh, difficult. Weird. But if you take a look at the, the CS numbers, the fact that he's still able to uh, to keep up in this game has been uh, ha has been really impressive. And he will still be that threat as this game goes on. Yeah, a lot of this is because uh, Omon translated the lead that he was able to acquire level 1 and onwards in mid lane in towards bot lane, right? He was present mm. on so many of those dives and counter dives on bot playing around here though the whole team really with the possible exception of catch coast who has simply kept Fei in his lane has played around here to get in this lead so i'd say it's worth that death to kaiser obviously that could come back to haunt them later on um hmm. but overall Jinrei did make the right choice in terms of how he played the economy and later around that. He managed to drag, drag his way back into this game. That's because Nord's put everything in the Hiddo basket, and that has served them well in the past. Maybe it serves them well again. And worth noting, it's the nerf Nico, right? Which also makes me yeah. wonder, Jinrei buddy, have we not really adapted our champ pool? Is this really it for us? Are we going to have to see on these two champions? Because then you're going to be beholden to Riot Freak, and that's not really <laughs> something anyone wants to be beholden to. <laughs> Oh. 
Definitely not. Definitely not. You don't want to be at the whims of the balance team <laughs> to determine whether or not you are going to be what? able to function in pro. I like the fourth wall, uh, able to take the mid lane tower there. It feels like Nord kind of dropping the ball a little bit, allowing yeah. that Rift Tower charge to come to through. Fight. But if they can get an engage they here, they're going to be A OK. Oh, Ragnar no. going to get pulled in by the Magnet Storm, knocked into the skies as well. Here but the damage Jim isn't following up from Fourth Wall. Jimray gets in there with a it? massive pot blossom. But over one shot, no Kamara catch cost with the ult. Double kill for the cannon. Ace for Nord. No one dies. Wow. That was a really, really good engage there from Nord. Even the flank from Jimray with that TP almost. Almost salvaging that fight does catch Hido and he's the MVP, right? You've got to bring him down Couldn't quite do it. Didn't have enough damage a wombo from Nord proved to be too strong They're gonna win the team fight. They're gonna get that tower all things looking good for Nord Yep, and the the full combo did not was not able to come out because Jace Omon specifically was able to stick on top of Ragnar, prevent him getting on top for the rest of his team to try to get that last little bit of burst down. So no big players able to be made. It was the correct call from Nord to go for that fight in the first place. If they were going to lose out on the map here, the only way he dragged that back is of a team fight. They're in the lead. They can't afford to just wait for a later point in the game. And so they go straight for it. It paid huge dividends there. Well played by everyone involved. But shout out to Omon there from, for keeping Kaiser from being able to follow up on the Jinwei engage, which could have been huge. Huge. Dude, you said it. You said it better. And mate, all eyes on on Omen. He's a player to watch, right? And and this is why, because he's yeah, the, he's, the, the, he's crazy. The, church, the Church of Omen, right? Yeah. That's what we were talking about <laughs> pre-game, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. is I, critical I, for their wins, though, and has been the whole time. The entire question with Nord is always going to be: Is this a good day for mid jungle? And today looks to be a good day for mid jungle. Lovely day for mid jungle here. Aside from indecision having to play Rel, I'm sure he's not too happy about that one, but I suppose he'll take the win as it looks like Nord is setting up for that with 7,000 gold plus in their favor here. Really, really juicy stuff. That's the second dragon as well. It will be that Hextech soul if we even get to that point. To me, though, all eyes are going to be around this barren area. We've got 30 seconds until it spawns. Teams are going to want to try and control that with some vision, but you know, Nord, with, with this, such a huge lead, can certainly just walk around there, sweep it down, get the vision. And then you've got to wonder, what does Fourth, fourth Wall do? Like, what's the response if, if the barren area is, is dark, if it's all blind? Because you can't really, you can't check it unless you've got like Kaiser W on like a 20 second cooldown. And if you mm. do face check, the Rakan comes out of nowhere. The Rel comes out of nowhere. The Ash Arrow, you know, the, the poke from Jace as well. It's so... Difficult to navigate Fog of War if you're fourth wall, and they might just be giving it up here, giving up this area of the map. Stuck between a rock and a hard place now, and we'll see how they can navigate. Uh, Shimmer is able to get a pick, able to get a big pop blossom, then maybe that's an angle, but he's not even got his second item yet uh, on the Nico. So, really, the primary damage source on fourth wall at the moment is Ragnar, and there's a little bit of an AD carry go. diff going on right now, and it doesn't necessarily feel like it's even Ragnar's fault. Hito is just way too strong at the moment. And this is what Nord could do. You could just stand next to the Baron. Kachkos is always going to have priority in that side lane. Faye's going to have go, to check match. that. And as they match, that's going to give an opportunity to Nord. I'm just yep. disappointed. They've not done a good job of sweeping this vision at all. You can have complete control of this area. No one is stopping you. And finally, they are going to you know, get that... Get that ward in the river, one in the bush there as well. I do really think this is this is such a favourable position here for Nord. A push as well from Catchcross now coming up. Uh, he's following Chimera's court. Yeah, and a lone Nautilus is an easy target. Has to flash, won't even be able to Spider-Man hook himself away. One off the board, is that enough for Nord to start up the Baron? This is how Domino wanted to be playing last game, right? Split the enemy team by playing free pressure. They have Jace holding Nico on top side. They have Kennen forcing the Cassante towards bot side. And in those splits, they can make their catches in enemy jungle. They don't have to team fight them. They just catch them out one by one using their pressure. Four fool are the ones that have to find the fight. I mean, Yute hasn't really been pulled away from. Charm on to two with the knockup there. Indecision going back over the wall. To pick onto Faye and the Baron resets. Nord, though, spent a little bit too long on that bait, and so will reset, spend their gold. I think Fourth will be okay with that one. A push Nord off of the Baron. 
Not going to have that one go down just yet. But if you're Nord, it's really just a rinse and repeat here. Again, yep. go back to this Baron area. You you put the vision down, you sweep it, you get rid of everything that Fourth Wall is setting up here, and you just do the exact same. You saw that Fourth Wall, I said they didn't have any ways for, to, for them to really face check Fog of War or, or just navigate Fog of War in any meaningful way, and that's exactly how Chimera died, right? He, he walked into Fog of War to try and see what was going on, and he died. Uh, yep. And then it, you just don't have to stop this ever. You know, you just keep doing it. And as the, as the game as goes again. on, you can actually start taking taking dragon as well. And like you're really close to getting little dragon soul. Like it's just it's just so difficult here if you're fourth wall and Nord are really in such a powerful position in this game. And every death puts you behind, not just in gold, but by being dead, your team can't come out on the map and extend further. So Nord were able to get out onto the map first. Jace was able to push bot all the way out. Top was pushed by Kennen all the way out. And Nord are in the balance pit before Fawful uh, could ever group. Omen nearly getting caught out in the mid lane there. But well, he's going to be Ooh, fine. Nice. Barrow's going to get a oh, hook. So Ignite on him as well. Nord have already taken away the Baron. They're going to opt into the fight as well. One shotting the Nautilus is Faye rotating over. He's not going to be able to block that arrow. Is Seneca coming over the wall? Indecision joining him. Nord bringing more members and more gold to the party. Getting two more kills for Hado. Kamara, a very aggressive player, but his aggression was met by a stopwatch, one of the worst feelings in the world. And then the kill on him makes the Jace untargetable. No way to terminate that Jace. Nord, they get the Baron, they get the kills. They're only getting incremental slow wins, but it's a win every single time. And Fawful are mm. unable to find the fight that could get them back control of the map. Remember, the only way for Fawful to be able to get control of the map again, to not just see a black jungle and black side lane and a black mid lane off of it and a black river off of that is to win a fight and they have to win that fight in total darkness Nord full control of the game and they're not giving it up yeah not unlike Pluto everything black and yeah there's the copium <laughs> that Oven, Hedo, and Kachkos technically aren't getting any tankier with the items that they're building but the issue wow. is they're going to one-shot you before you could even get your damage down. I love how you say that. And literally, literally, the, the second you said that, Gets Kiddo GA. buys GA. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you could not have timed that better if you tried. But no, it's very true, honestly. It's just, and even these base stats, you have to remember as well, as champions level up, they get around a thousand gold worth of stats. And that does include things like health and resistances. So uh, you say... Yeah, it's not looking good here. We've already seen Ragnar fall. You, it's gonna fall as well. That's two members dead, and now Nord. The pick of the litter here. They've got Baron buff. They've got all their members alive. The whole map is their oyster. It's gonna be barreling down top for the time being. A little bit in the mid as well. It's so hard for Fourth Order to defend this one. I don't think they can do it. Yeah, no, no wave clear available as Jim Ray going back to base. The inhib tower, a casualty of this push. The inhib. The top side may be as well as Indecision and Hedo focus down the mid lane inhibitor. Ragnar going to be on the board right now, but doesn't feel like there's anything that Fourth Wall can do to stop this push. So Nords will take down the structures and they'll back away. I mean, Nord, they came into this game with a plan, didn't they? Right? They said, we're yep. not going to let Jinwei play the game. And before minions even spawned, they put their plan into action. And off of that, they're like, okay, now we will transfer that lead on towards Hiddo on the bot lane. And they did it. But crucially, they do this all as, so long as you are of the opinion top laners that aren't real and don't actually exist, did mm -hmm. it as a team, right? And in doing so, they've managed to get themselves this. And this, this win is looking very clean. It's not looking perfect, but it is looking very, very clean. They haven't given up control of the map at all ever since they took control of it. None of them are getting individually caught out. They aren't winning super hard accelerate, uh, acceleratingly, but they're not really a big 5-on-5 five five team. So they'll take this. They'll catch Yuta out as much as they want. This is going to be his 8th death. There you go. This is going to be his 8th death. And, you know, incremental wins are still Ooh. a win. Yeah, Camaro going for a last disengage in the bottom lane, but Hedo oh, takes so basically no damage at all in Dives Dragon, but he gets stunned by Kachkos. You just can't kill the Ash. Faye will try, but he will die a double for Hedo. How many times have I said that this <laughs> game? And with Jin Ray, the only one left alive, those towers are soon to fall. Hedo's been pocketing all the kills this game. Fourth World been throwing everything in the kitchen, sinking in, but they've just lacked a little bit of damage. It's the might of the wallet this time around, that 15,000 gold lead for Nord. 
culminating in a very dominant victory. Putting themselves firmly in that playoff position here and remnants of their previous split. The mm. greatness of Nord that we know they can do. Yeah, and importantly, securing the head-to-head -head against fourth wall. When you've got teams that are so tight in the middle of the table, getting that 2-0 over your opponents across the split is very important when it comes to tiebreaker situations. Calm, calculated, incredibly smooth gameplay from Nord. A little bit rough on the edges at first. Probably the most kills we've seen of any game in early game this split, right? That early dive could have gone a bit better, but once they started grouping, they really didn't give up anything. Any small things they may have given away, they fought their way back immediately on the next phase. Ruddy, they're going to have been looking at this game because the winner of that game mm. is their most immediate challenger for that third place. And this was a very scary version of Nord that took that lead. I mean, this was predicted, right? True wit, I agree. You're you're very muted on the on yeah. Well, ah, Maybe yeah, muted. On there we go. Yes, there he is. Um, He's back. I got I got to get used to the work that was what you said. That was the Nord victory was predicted. You know, I mean, I, I just write I, I write I just write the script. I'm sorry, oh, guys. Man, right? he like, actually I, I, does. It's insane. <laughs> I just write the script every single time. The question no, is, like, what did game... Jake predict? Oh yeah. That's yeah, the... actually, hold that's on. That's what we need I, to know. Yeah. Yeah. Predicted <laughs> fourfold. You predicted yeah. fourth all. Okay, cool. So Jake's on his on his goal to getting zero <laughs> on the day. Yes. Uh, good yes. for him. Good for him. What did Aragorn predict? I think Ar I think Aragorn was Nord. I think Aragorn was Nord. Aragorn was Nord. Been... Okay. Yeah. Right. But the most important thing is that Middle Cup did not go Nord. He went he went fourth wall, I believe. So I Ooh. get a point. I, I extend my lead. But no, let's talk about this because this game was absolutely crazy, right? Okay, yeah, thank yeah, you so much, go. production. There we are. We are. They would shame them. Oh, Retro and Fourth Wall as well. Gah, what yeah, a chump. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, I, bet anyway. I stand by that. Yeah. Actually, like, they yeah. didn't let him play out the game, but it is worrying to see that your last pick becomes a counter pick on yourself, right? The Nico mm. doesn't function that well in towards the Jace anyway. The Nico's lost a lot of her functions from beforehand. That's really going to be your default with Lissandra down. That could be an issue. This could be the start of the exposed arc against Fawful because we saw how they play without Jinrei being able to lead all those skirmishes. It didn't really go so well. But I have a question here, right? How impactful was that first blood on Jinrei's hand? So him so putting him behind in lane obviously was a huge boost for for Hedo in the long run, getting that extra economy in veteran. Uh, the first blood, I wouldn't say it was actually that impactful because the biggest thing that happened with the first blood was the kill on towards Hido, but Hido wasn't able to cash yeah. that in. And by the time he was able to get back in base, it was because his opponents had in fact forced his old team back in base by countering on that dive. So I wouldn't say the first one was, but the second big play that they made on Jinwei was very impactful. And the fact that Jinwei couldn't find any more angles off of that, that was very big. I do like the plan that they had with Omon, where Omon was giving some economy back over, but just accelerating this Ash so fast and so hard on the bot lane and crucially attempting to shut down the Kaiser so they didn't really have any damage options to follow up the Jin Rei Nico. If I can add on to that as well, I feel like the bigger impact from that first blood was the fact that uh, Omon just had like permanent tempo after that, right? Jin Rei also had to blow his TP. So you saw Omon yeah. was like moving around constantly and helping helping Hido and like that really worked out well for them. But you didn't see Jin Rei roam once, you know, and that's not his fault. He couldn't, right? Yeah. And that was just the way that yeah. it was set up, and a lot of that was from the first kill. I, was, I thought someone else who had something to add, to be completely honest with me. So that was why I can I, say uh... that I think it's going to go that way even without the first blood. Like, I just don't think this is a very good yeah. matchup in the current state yeah. of Nico and just in general. Like, uh, that would be a matchup would have been fine if even when Nico was OP, is the thing. Yeah, and, like, and I, I also, I, like, I was kind of interested, like, as you, you guys kind of briefly to touched on this, but, like, this massive focus into the bot lane in, in the early game from, like, from Nord, right, just to get Hito ahead on Ash, a, 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 a champion that we don't see a whole lot of, right? And uh, that is, that, that's that's just an interesting thing as well. Like, you kind of you bring out the Ash thing. Hito has played it once before the season already, but, like, just showing that this Ash seems to be reckoned with is pretty impactful, I, I believe, as well, Foxtrot. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, what's nice about it as well is um, you can always pull the trigger on Ash. Like, it's really, really simple. Yeah. I'm a big fan of ease of execution. There is nothing difficult about that champion, <laughs> uh, unless you're trying to stay alive. That can be hard. 
Uh, although, mm. to be fair, to Hito's mm. credit, he did that pretty well this but game, I, but he was very ahead. I, I think the, the key to that is, like, on Ash, like, you can say that the items don't make you tankier, but the fact that you are constantly applying these loans means that you can space people, like, very, very easily. And I think we saw in one of those bot lane plays, Hito just ran at Ragnar. And yeah. because he was ahead on the Ash, it's not like the Kaiser can fight back in terms of damage and she can't run away either. So you end up with this big snowball. And it's not surprised that there was so much focus towards the bot lane because the Ash is great for setting up plays. And if she's mm. able to provide a load of damage as well, the, the weaknesses get covered quite nicely. And yeah. also, just, and this that, is a win lane sorry. win game team. Right? Yeah. So you no can't one. just leave it alone. You have to play through it. And they did it. This is what Domino should have done. They should learn from this game. All right, veteran. Uh, I am going to take that point and throw it into an interview because we have Fi on the line here from the side of Fourth Wall. So first of all, is it Hello. Faye? Is it Fi? How do I, how do I pronounce uh, your name? Faye, Fi, that's a lot to me. I mean, okay. however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> a man after my own heart, to be completely honest here with you. So obviously you have kind of taken a step into what I believe the role as starting top laner for Fourth Wall. Wasn't there last week, but what is like kind of your personal objective with coming in here and, and taking the starting spot in the MLC? So basically, well, like I come from like uh, fourth division, so I have never played in like this level ever in my life. So my objective is basically just to like improve and just like learn from better players and play against good players. Um, like I'm doing it right now, and I'm trying my best to um, just you know, like show off my, my best, my better version on, on the officials. So obviously you guys have had pretty good success as a team overall after this final round of roster changes. I think it's safe to say that I've been a few for fourth wall. Um, how is it to, to, I mean, obviously this game, not the greatest example of you losing directly to a, to an opponent uh, in the, in the Canada playoff race here, but how has this change been? I obviously didn't win this before, but like how has it been to be a part of this kind of change in the, well, in the, in the trajectory? Um, I, I didn't know how the team was before me. Um, I, I came into the team when we they did like all the changes. So from what I've heard, like it's going better, like the communication and the improvement and the reviews are going like better. It's going like more smoothly than before. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know how was the team before. I cannot, I cannot compare it. So you, you said briefly before that you were kind of looking to play against better players and with better players and improve overall. What do you believe is your biggest strength as a player in, in League of Legends? Mm, well, I think I'm really open to everything. Like I'm open to every opinion, to um, every kind of play style. I can like uh, ask everyone, like I'm going to try to get the opinion on everyone's uh, perspective. So yeah, I think I'm really open to everything. I think I'm that's my biggest strength. Thank you. And before I let you go here, is there any shout outs you want to give before um, I let you go? Uh, well, yeah, shout out to Michelle. Uh, she's my boss. She's watching me right now. And to my team, like, we're going to just improve and, I don't know, play better next time. Yeah. So, thank you so much for your time, Fine, and best of luck tomorrow. That's all right. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. I don't know if you guys also heard that, but... Uh, it, it, Gala? Oh, oh, oh yeah. bro, 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 I took my headphones and I could hear it. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I guess he's calling on on his phone and then he got like a text or something and it just like yeah. <laughs> blew everything well, up. <laughs> yeah. um, blowing everything out of the water here, Hito, we spoke about him before as well. And uh, last time we had a big discussion when Hito had one of these games, a veteran said that you can't give MVP sh purely based off of KDA, right? Yeah. Um, and I mean, was this a game where like you end up giving, like, would you object giving MVP this game off the basis of uh, KDA here? Because I think like, it's kind of hard to kind of forgo him in such no, a game. He was the most consistent member of the team by yeah. far, right? And whether his positioning was good at the start of fights or not was going to determine the course of the whole game. And he was the one player there that played that impeccably, right? He was the one player there that did it. So even if it was a team effort to get him ahead, it absolutely was not a team effort to keep him ahead. There were times where indecision got caught. There were times where Omon just gives a bounty over to the Kaiser. There were loads of times where Hiddo was probably just sighing. 
massaging, thinking of a calm blue ocean, but he didn't let that get to him. He kept playing solidly the entire game. He was that big bullseye target for his opponents. They were, they were never quite able to reach, and eventually Kamara loses his mind, Jimmy loses his mind, Yute definitely lost his mind trying to get on this guy, and they won the game. I also like the fact that he's from Malsa, right? Like, it, it, I think it's just cool. Like, it, it's from like a, a nation that we don't get to see a lot in, in League of Legends competitive play, Foxdrop, and I think that, like, that, like, having that, like, representation, I think it's actually something that could be really cool in the long run. Yeah, for sure. I actually think that's something that the NLC does really well. There's a there's a lot of a lot of countries represented. When you compare it to other other regional leagues, you know, which are maybe more focused on like one, one well, like, like for example, what LFL is is like France. But obviously, there's more than just French players in the league. Uh, but hold, still. Hold, yeah, hold on, hold on. We, we got you got to got to remember Monaco, like in in the LFL, bro. Like they you got to fly the flag yeah. for them. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a lot of it there too. But I just think you know NLC <laughs> blows it out of the water, right? You got you got all the Nordics. You got all the I know you just put it in my leg, but yeah, legit, also. it's it's uh it's cool, definitely cool. The we also Mos had uh, Moss's face from from Egypt, the. Uh, De Demen Demeninator, whatever his, his nickname was. Ironically, you got subbed out for Faye this game. So, Malto, um... no? Malto. Malto? No, but not, not him. This The guy he replaced was from Egypt. Was... Yeah, yeah, but Malto. Oh, I thought we'd say he's from Malto. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know, I, I know. Like, very, it's, I mean, technically it's only one verb, but it's. There's only like, only like one like. You, you wouldn't think that I have a vowel. You wouldn't think that I have two English degrees, right? Like you wouldn't think that I would, don't know what the name of the vowel is, right? But you just change the the O for an A, and then well, yeah, that's kind of the same. So it here does. as well. And it's speaking so of great. the man of the hour, we have an interview with Hito ready here. So uh, let's get him in here. Hello, Hito. Hello. Uh, congratulations on your late another strong performance here this time on the Ash. Um, Thank what's you. it like just absolutely stomping one of your opponents in this tight playoff race? Yeah, I mean, uh, stomping. I mean, definitely is good to win, right? Uh, I mean, that, that does look like a stomp, so yeah, we'll take it that way. I mean, it feels good, right? Uh, obviously, winning it feels really good, so. Yeah, and also, so, so you, you come from, from Malta. Which is, is yep. pretty cool. And in, in fact, that I don't necessarily, it's not like the country that I kind of connect with having a strong regional scene. So I guess you just kind of came out uh, of like EU West ladder to a certain extent, or, or what's that experience been like? Uh, that's pretty much the situation. Yeah, I was, uh, I was pretty much, um, I was a mar master hard sack player like uh, in last preseason. And beginning of this new season, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna grind it out. Maybe I can get challenger, see where I can, where my skill actually takes me. I was able to attain like a rank 17, and then I started searching for teams with the help of a, with a multi friend coach of mine. Um, and that's pretty much it. Right now, we're in a, I'm now in, in North, right? How is the story? Yeah, so, 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 so kind of speaking of the long-term goals for you personally, is the aim for you to? to get to to the point of something like the like like the lec for example is that the end goal or what where do you see yourself in like let's say two years mm. i mean i think that's the end goal for everyone not just me right um hopefully and potentially i have enough skill to reach that setting and i'll try to put in as much hard work as i possibly can to attain that level uh, but that is ultimately the goal right which is almost certainly like from for every other player pretty much so yeah i would say that is also my goal yeah Thank you so much for your time. Best of luck tomorrow. Congratulations on a Thank great you. win here, Walt. Thank yeah. you. And with that, we're going to go to a short break. But when we come back, we're going to have our third game of the day ready for you guys. It's going to be Unique versus Ruddy, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
For those in attendance to Summoner's Rift, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. The semi-finals are here. The path to victory is clear. But will these legends fall out in fear or will they claim victory in front of that crowd's cheer? It is time for Mid Split Mundo Madness! Introducing a man that has been described as the GOAT of the NLC, the GOAT of interviews holding a MMM record of 1 and 0. Oh, it is Dan Vox And facing him an undefeated challenger. A wild card top lane in the region. It is time for Spoon! And here we have it, the first semi-final match to get underway. Spoon in the top side in the red, then Voxley in the blue, and taking a heavy hit off the bat. Then Voxley needs to kind of stable himself here as he does land one back, and it's all going to be evens. Stevens. A bit of a slower start than maybe some of their previous games so far, but both members kind of sizing each other out, trying to find where they're weakest, getting those angles for those cleavers to land as we are starting to get to that halfway. Oh, that was the wrong button. Say, gonna follow suit as Spooner is losing quite a lot yeah. of time. Just stepping up, but not gonna be able to land one. Could do it all, but a good flash from Spooner keeps him safe. He misses though. It might be all over. It's so fucking over. <laughs> But he misses, he doesn't get it, but Smoodah misses again, he cannot miss once more, if he misses again, it is over for him, he gets the hit, he manages to land, but is it going to be enough, will he bring it back, it's low from Edoxy, he misses again, Smoodah is slightly too wide, can Edoxy finish it, he cannot find the hit, Smoodah taking him down to 1 HP, who will land the final cleaver, is Day? Okay, okay, okay. holy shit, that was close, that was way too close, yeah, holy shit. full focus, like I didn't speak <laughs> And it was like a full tryout. And in to game two, we are here. I was looking at the clock, I'm sure. I can count. No mind. Be down to the wire in game one. Will Dimbox get it that close again? This time having a good start, but we saw this last time around. Smoodle took a lot of cleavers in the first half. He had him, but he wasn't able to close it out. As now we see the ghost prox picking up that tempo, trying to make it a bit more tricky to land those cleavers. And we're seeing the dodge rate increase, but Spooner going so low. Then Voxnay is so high HP. Surely he's got this in the bag, but a miss. Hey now. It's looking good. <laughs> it's looking very good. Ooh, no, 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 love, bro. <laughs> love, bro. Okay, you're gonna do comeback here or what? <laughs> no, yeah, fuck this. Finish it off. One oh, last cleaver. Okay, I'm too clean with it. I'm winning this whole thing. I'm saying it now. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It's a cruel game, but the king of the NLC, the king of interviews, is he going to become the king of mid-split Mundo 